quick trip down memory lane here. We're starting the review process. Extra practice. We want to get really good at the skills we've already looked at. Try to prepare and get ready for a test. Of course, for the trig ratios, first thing I probably do here is find the missing side of the triangle. Pythagorean theorem would be the tool that I would use. Looks like 2 root 10 is the missing side. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent, opposite over adjacent. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Of course, I'm not going to leave it as 7 over 2 root 10. So I have to rewrite this, and I get 7 root 10 over 20. Secant, of course, the reciprocal of cosine, that's just 7 thirds. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. And again, I cannot leave a radical denominator. I rewrite that as 3 root 10 over 20. So using some of those old Algebra 1 skills to rewrite without the radical denominator. Again, how do I tax something like this? Well, triangle number one, I know the missing angle has to be 60 because I have to add up to 180. Of course, if the short leg is 8, double it to get the hypotenuse of 16, or multiply it by root 3 to get the long leg of 8 root 3. Triangle number two, remember how to do these? 45 degrees because it has to add up to 180. Of course, the legs have to be equal, so the other leg will be 5, and the hypotenuse will be 5 root 2. Number 3, 30, 60, 90. Short leg has to be half the hypotenuse, so the short leg will be 2, and of course, the longer leg will be 2 root 3. 45, 45, 90. So the legs will have to be equal, and to get them, I have to take the hypotenuse and divide by root 2. 14 divided by root 2 is 7 root 2. 30, 60, 90 right triangle. If I know the long leg to get the short leg, I divide by root 3. 9 divided by the square root of 3 will get me 3 root 3. Of course, if I double that to get the hypotenuse, it's 6 root 3. I only see one angle on number 6, but I know it has to be a 30, 60, 90, because side A is exactly half of side C. So I know it's a 30, 60, 90, and since the short leg is 9, the long leg is 9 root 3. Number 6, again, I can do a deuce, it's a 30, 60, 90, because one of the sides is root 3 times the other one. So sure enough, it's a 30, 60, 90, 6, 6, root 3, and 12. Numbers 8 and 9 look like they are done in radians. Right? Pi over 2 is a 90 degree angle. So we've got a 30, 60, 90 with a 5, 5, root 3, 10. And then we've got a 45, 45, 90 with 2, 2, root 2. But of course, instead of putting 30, 60, 90, since I had a pi over 2, I'll make it pi over 6 and pi over 3. And of course, instead of 45, 45, 90, because the right angle was given as pi over 2, I will use pi over 4, pi over 4, pi over 2. Probably my favorite thing to do in math, verify identities. Again, we just start with the left-hand side. Look into my math toolbox, and what can I do? Well, if I want to add fractions, I better get a common denominator. Of course, multiplying by the number 1 does not change the value. 
So if I multiply each fraction by one, I've made no change. Of course, I can disguise the number one. For the first fraction, I'll disguise it as cosecant theta over cosecant theta. On the other fraction, I'll disguise the number one as secant theta over secant theta. I get a common denominator of cosecant theta, secant theta. Of course, in that first fraction, cosecant theta and sine of theta are reciprocals. So if I multiply those together, I get one. On the second fraction, secant theta and cosine theta, those are reciprocals. If I multiply those together, I get one. So now when I add these fractions, one plus one makes two. Of course, cosecant of theta is just the reciprocal of sine of theta. Secant theta is just the reciprocal of cosine theta. And there we have it. Start with the left-hand side, go step by step, until you can finally manipulate it to be the right-hand side. Of course, what if we give you a right triangle that's not a 30, 60, 90, or it's not a 45, 45, 90? Highly recommend you draw a picture. Label everything you know. I'll choose to go after angle A first. By picking an angle, I now know what side is opposite, what side is adjacent. Of course, we already knew what the hypotenuse was going to be. So if I want that angle, I have to use sine of theta because I know opposite and hypotenuse. So sine of angle A has to be two nines. So if I actually want the measurement of angle A, I have to find the arc sine of two ninths. Grab a calculator, make sure I'm set for degrees. It comes to be about 12.8 degrees. I can add that to my diagram. I can add that into my answer display there. Of course, if I know two angles, piece of cake, they gotta add up to 180 degrees for the three of them. So if I know two, I can quickly find the third one. I can add it to my diagram, add it to my answer display. Finally, on a right triangle, if I know two sides, I actually know all three because I can use the Pythagorean theorem. Square root is 77. Now, if we're doing unit circle trigonometry, I would leave it as an exact value. But mathematicians, for whatever crazy reason, when they're just solving the right triangles, they like to convert to decimals. So I could have left it as root 77 if I wanted to. It won't simplify beyond that. Or if I tell my calculator to do decimal approximation, it comes out to be about 8.8. .8. Add it to my diagram, add it to my answer display. Okay, let's graph this. You know, the sign has a value of zero at zero. It reaches its maximum value of one at pi over two. Returns to zero at pi. Minimum value of negative one at three pi over two. And then when we've gone pi radians, it's back to zero. There's one complete cycle of the sine function, period of two pi. Hey, there's a two out in front. It's two times the sine of x. So the amplitude is two. The maximum will be two. The minimum will be two. The period is still just two pi, however. Hey, there's a plus one in back. Let's lift the entire curve up one unit. And 
And so there is one complete cycle of pi. I'm sorry, one complete cycle of 2 sine of x plus 1. It has a period of 2 pi. And then I can just repeat that again and again, and there is my sine wave. Almost as fun as verifying identities, solving equations. I'm fortunate I only see theta in one spot. I can undo the order of operations. Add one to each side, divide each side by three, take the square root of each side, Then I gotta figure out where am I on that unit circle where tangent could be either positive root three over three or negative root three over three. Pi over six, five pi over six, seven pi over six, 11 pi over six. Of course I see theta all over the place. So I'll have to factor this. I see four terms, so this is factored by grouping. Secant theta is my common factor from the first two terms. It leaves me two sine theta minus one. Negative two is my common factor from the third and fourth term. It leaves me two sine theta minus one. Still equal to zero. Let's use the distributive property. <laughs> Using the distributive property, I've got secant theta minus 2 multiplied by 2 sine theta minus 1. And ultimately, how do I check? First, outer. inner last sure enough it matches what we started with set each factor equal to zero of course if secant of theta equals two that means cosine of theta is one half And then I also have to consider sine, positive one half. So where am I? Well, it looks like at pi over six, sine has a value of one half. At pi over three, cosine has a value of one half. At five pi over six, sine has a value of one half. And then finally, at five pi over three, cosine has a value of positive one half. Now this worksheet is a little bit on the lengthy side. We're trying to prepare for a test. This is the first day of review. I'm thinking that uh, two good days of review should be sufficient. So this will be the first day of review. We'll do a second day of review. And then hopefully at that point, we're ready to proceed toward a test.